Hi, I'm Ed Wagner from Wagner Meters. In this presentation, I'd like to answer a couple of questions many people ask me when they're using the RapidRH. The first question is, how do you test thin materials with the RapidRH? This question comes to mind when they're trying to determine if a leveling compound is dry enough so that they can put down a floor covering over the top. Another very common question people ask when they're testing thin materials is, how far can the tube come out of the concrete? Most people expect the top of the tube to just come to the top surface of the concrete and not stick out above it. That requirement, however, is not necessary. There is no problem with the top of the sensor sticking up above the surface of the material to be measured. In fact, it's the most common way of using the RapidRH in testing thin materials. Having the top of the sensor flush with the surface of the material can be an advantage, however, in that the sensor is less likely to be damaged during the time of equilibration. I also tell people that they can pull the top plastic tube off the sensor and then cut it to the length that they want before inserting it back onto the sensor. There's one very critical thing people need to be aware of when testing thin materials with the RapidRH. The seals at the bottom of the sensor need to be pushed down into the material to be tested. This is critical because an airtight seal must be created near the bottom of the sensor in order that the room air does not get mixed into the air that's being measured at the bottom of the hole. Once people understand what is important in the measurement, they are ready to move forward with the testing of the thin material. This is Ed Wagner. Thanks for watching and together, let's keep learning. Check out these other videos and click subscribe.